I've been hungry lately. 30 million. Was it 30 million or 300 million? 30 million. 30 million dogs and cats have been eaten last year alone. Food for thought. Correction is actually, I think, 25 million cats, 30 million dogs. But Either way, that's yeah. still wicked. Yeah. But anyway, uh, today we're just going to talk about some stuff we have in the talking points. Uh, I don't know exactly what we're talking about, but we'll let it flow. Um, please remember to give us a five-star rating on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you listen to this podcast. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. All right, I'll start with the first question um, that I have prepared. So I saw this uh, actually last night. So Naval had a, a, he has a video about like happiness and that more well, people. Hold on, hold on. Is it Naval or Naval? I think it's Naval or Avalon. Yeah, because yeah. Naval is like your belly button. Yeah, but he, um, he's basically saying, you know, the balance between being happy and being intelligent. And it's harder for intelligent people to be happy because you see through the facades of society and the, you know, people getting taken advantage of and stuff like that. But he's like, you're smarter. You should, it's, it's tougher, but you can be, there's a workaround and you're smart enough to figure it out of how to be happy despite you knowing too much. Cause that's your issue is you do know too much. So, you know, there's no ign- ignorance is bliss. So how do you personally balance being in the know, but also being like content? Um, well, disclaimer, I don't think I'm the smartest person in the world, but I do think I have just a, general above yeah, average. Intelligence. Yeah, I think I have general above average intelligence. Mm. Um, I think what I do to counteract that blight is disdain from any information overload. So I usually find myself being the happiest when I'm reading a book or or gaining information somehow through youtube or through a podcast but yeah through like a like a drip faucet and not like a siphon like exactly a, like a uh, yeah it gets to a point where i'm just like damn i just got all this knowledge and i got to apply it and that is kind of where i find most of the hardship uh when i detox myself from that kind of stuff i i, I get a little better like at my job for example it's a very simple job it's not too uh cerebral so when I'm at that job, I kind of use it as my like, okay, I'm doing this simple thing. I, you know, it's a one, two, I don't want to get too in, in depth in, in what it is, but um, it, it kind of keeps me grounded. Like simple things, doing simple things kind of reminds me that I'm just a simple human being as opposed to just like overanalyzing everything about the world, which gets kind of tricky because I always got to ground myself with like uh, Hinduism or something like no judgment. So I'm always, in my head, I'm just like, look at this, this, this <laughs> imbecile. <laughs> but I'm just like, wait, no judgment, no judgment, no judgment. Yeah. What yeah. about you? Yeah, no, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I, um, I'll, I'll open the Gita and I'm just like, yeah, just that, that left brain, over, like constantly analyzing, constantly judging, you know, low-key being a hater, like, ah, oh, she ain't that bad. Like, you know, it's like, no, just if you just have that no mind, that empty mind, you can just appreciate things. You have, you have space for it. So Definitely that. Um, and yeah, just getting into more positive views of philosophy um, or positive philosophies or um, they explain it in a more positive light, um, which the Gita does and other things like that. Um, and then, yeah, same thing, just f- uh, picking what you listen to and, mm-hmm. and like take in um, not necessarily, oh, you know, they're doing this in this part of the world or, oh, did you know? And 1485 you know the meat was actually people or what you know (laughs) like you know all that stuff but it's like what do you gain from it you a it's in the past you can't change anything other people don't care why do you care Mm -hmm. i mean you should but you can only affect what's in your you know direct environment so do the best to just do that and you know you should be good in that same breath since we're talking about you know uh, intellect self-taught versus formally trained which do you think is better I think it depends on what it is. Mm-hmm. I think if it's, <clears throat> I think if it's something creative, self-taught is the best way to go because your own creativity is your guiding light and, and guiding uh, force. But you do need, I think, in, you know, in like the anime sense, you do need that teacher to kind of like 
hone your skills because you don't even know where you're swimming. You're mm-hmm. like you're just out in the ocean when it's a creative endeavor. When it's something more technical and whatever, a teacher's is easier because you're just gonna skip so many pitfalls of like if you're a coder. Like, oh, learn this language because this is what's applicable now instead right. of, oh, this is what we learned in college. And now I, what my skills are now are completely different than what I need. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say. You A little bit of both, but I think, yeah, more, more right-brained creative endeavors. You have to go through that process a little bit. And then once you're, let's say, you're past Little League, then a teacher will come along. But for something technical, just have your hand held through it and then your teacher will kind of let you go off into the world and let you, you know, flourish and stuff. Right, right. I agree with that too. I agree with that. I think with my music career uh, endeavor, it's actually been more beneficial that I've been self-taught because a lot of the times when I hear mixes from people who went to school or get information from people who went to school, the information is there and they know a lot more than I do. But I think a lot of people become too rigid in how they apply and, and approach certain uh technicalities and certain processes uh when it comes to yeah like you said the creative things so i concur i can yeah um complete like non sequitur question now um since you know we always like to bring in the money aspect how do you personally budget like what is what does your budget look like like how do you allocate your money what do you allocate when and why and you know what is your yeah what's your end goal so why do you allocate things the way you do I was just talking to my, my girl about this in the car. And briefly, it was, um, I'm a spender, but I do know the importance of saving and investing. Um, so how I budget, I write down my recurring expenses for the month. Mm-hmm. So these are definitely going to happen. They're going to come from my account, irregardless of what I do. So that's already taken care of. Regardless. Yeah, or Irregardless in a word. Oh, yeah, it's not, but <laughs> it's fine. I like using that word anyway. Irregardless. Uh, (laughs) um so i budget out that and then i look at how much i spent on food the last month and i write that write that down on my budget um i try and cut back on food as much as possible because i mean that's what we spend the most amount of money on yeah ital diet yeah um i'm not not on the ital diet yet but eventually so i can yeah breatharian just yeah photosynthesize (laughs) yeah exactly um so my recurring expenses, food, uh, gas, like this, the, the things that are non-negotiable, those are in my budget. And then whatever's left over, or oh, before I even budget out that I'm saving no less than 10%, like at least 10%. So if I'm saving 10%, then I might invest 10%, but I'm not investing in anything right now because I, I had to start from ground zero. Um, and then whatever's left over, it's either just like, money I'm putting back into music, like cover art, music videos, lyric videos, um, whatever may have you like. This is this is small stuff, like travel expenses. I don't even buy clothes. I wear, yeah. I wear black shirts all the time. Like yeah. this is, I get the same fit every day to Waldo, the Waldo warrior. The, Wal- the Waldo warrior, bro. That's how all the billionaires did it. So I'm copying that mantra for now, at least. I still try and splurge every now and again, like a building up my wardrobe, buy a pair of pants or something, but black shirts every day for me how yeah. do you budget um so trick i learned is well one i have multiple bank accounts so yes, me i have too. one bank account where all the money comes in and then i have uh for my job i have money go into another bank account that i don't have the debit card for so i can't really touch that money unless i like log in and like actually transfer it mm-hmm. um so that's my savings account so i never look at it i never really know how much is in there unless i have like some unforeseen event so that's my savings i usually take out yeah, maybe 10% of my entire check for that. And then um, my other one is kind of just like free game. Uh, right now, since like we're in a crypto bull market on the rise and like other stuff like that, I'm saving like as much as I need just to have like liquid cash. And then everything else is like, I haven't really been going anywhere, going to any parties, going to any like events that require money. So I eat like as cheaply as possible make sure my bills are paid and then every other remaining cent goes into um investing um because i know i'm not going to see it now i'm not going to see it even next year it wouldn't be until actually no it'd be 2025 maybe end of 2025 where i'd see the results so that's where um that's what i'm kind of waiting on because you know if i'm up six figures or something then i'm like all right you know i can take out 10k of that 
and put and then use that to invest towards something that can make me money now. I could buy like a operating business or something like that. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but as I think as like economic conditions change, that's when I change things up. If it's like investing in stocks are kind of slow anyway, just kind of just build up more of my savings instead of investing. But yeah, investing is like how you're going to get out of your situation. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Right. And you mentioned you haven't been anywhere recently. Um, but this is your question in the talking points. So I'm going to steal it. Uh, what's your vacation style? Like if you were to go to like, let's say you and I went to like Brazil or like Guam or something. Shout out Guam. Shout out Guam. What would be your ideal vacation style? Would you get a B&B? Would you hotel it? Would you resort it? Would you eat local food? Would you, you know? That's actually crazy. You stole this question, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the best one. Um, well, I mean, I'm just going first. Um, so my, I'm a boots on the ground sort of person, um, polyglot. So in Guam, I wouldn't speak the language, but in Brazil, I'd speak Portuguese. Um, so I definitely, I use my Cancun trip as an example back in 2018. Uh, shout out Josh, shout out Shani, shout out Corey, shout out Lucas, shout out to B. Um, I am definitely B and B. Like I want to live amongst the locals and live how someone there lives. What, what am I going to do in a hotel? Like I can get a hotel anywhere and doesn't, you're removed from the culture. So definitely B and B. Um, I like to have an itinerary for excursions and like physical stuff and like um, adventure stuff because those things fill up and like those are like outside things that you need to like have tickets for. But everything else is like freestyle. Um, I used to be like sun up to sundown, like from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. We got to be doing stuff. But as I've gotten older, I'm like, I'm on vacation. If I want to sleep in, I should have the ability to do so. So uh, sleep in now. And then um, like food wise, you know, I asked what the locals, like, where do you guys eat at? Like, what's the best local, whatever. Um, I'm pretty adventurous, like food wise. So like, I'll try almost something crazy, but I'm good off insects. No offense to the East, the Southeast Asian countries. Um, And I'm not eating like bull balls or whatever like something crazy that i've been seeing on social media some fear factor shit yeah (laughs) but like yeah (laughs) seafood is all fair game no matter what most foul they're all fair game beef balls um i'm good off the pork but um you know so i'll I'll try i'll try mostly anything you know for the most part but how would you say your your vacation style is i'm definitely a b&b kind of guy um i'm not really one for itineraries um I've always been this way too, where I'm, if I'm somewhere, hold on, if I'm somewhere, I don't like to do shit from sun up to sundown. You know, I like to wake up, do what I have to do in the morning, enjoy, I usually do vacation places that are warm too, like going back to Antigua. Oh yeah, I'm not going to Norway or anything yeah, like that, no. unless it's like summertime there. I go back to Antigua, I go to... I've been to Hawaii since I was a child, but like I, I, I'm visualizing warm places because this cold stuff is not it for this melanin right now. Yeah, no, it's really not. Um, I'll eat anything for the most part. I cut back from pork. I mean, I still eat anything though, but like I, I chew. I'm very distinct with what I eat, but if something's in front of me, I'll probably eat it just to be respectful to the host and the people who made the food. Um, but. Yeah, I'm, more, I'm a lax guy, man. I don't like to do too much. I never really like to do like to do too much. Even when I was like in my party phase, it was just you be at the party, you're there for like. Eight, it's cool for an hour. Yeah, it's cool to say hi. It's cool to whatever. I have a drink, maybe you know whatever. If you're into marijuana, you do that. And then I'm like, how about we just come back to my place and play some board games or something or something? Yes, yeah, like, you know, uh, I don't do too much. Music kind of loud right now. You know, I'm not not. I'm not feeling like getting light or getting sturdy. Like, yeah, we all heard these songs a million times. So, yeah. So, yeah. but I think that's a, I think that's a result of culture. We're just kind of, yeah, there's nothing new and vibrant, you know? I think we, we're, we're in that middle phase where we need some new, everything, everything doesn't last like it used to. Um, what's in today is kind of out tomorrow. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a little tough to, uh, to do all that. So. Um, but next question, I'm going to steal one of yours now. Laws. Mm. Shout Traf- out Trafalgar. Trafalgar law. Um, are laws useful 
or not useful and why? <sighs> Are laws useful and why? Shout out Jada Kiss. He said this. If you don't get caught, it's not a crime. That's a fact. That's a fact. Um, our law is useful. My uncle, rest in peace, Von Benjamin, man. Um, call him my unk. And he had this one line in his, one of his songs where he was like, lawmakers make the laws before anything altercates. So when I think, when I hear that line, I think of like, there is definitely something to be had and something to be upheld when it comes to human decency. So I think there are certain laws that are important. Like you can't just walk into someone's house. You can't just, just boom them. Yeah. Boom. The, you can't just like take advantage of people for no reason mm -hmm. in, in whatever way, shape or form. So I think those kind of things to protect safety and human decency are important, but I think there are just so many things that, that stem from, things outside of that that make it kind of like walking on eggshells you know mm -hmm. it's like okay i get i can't kill this person i get i can't just punch this guy in the face but like back when they were locking people up for dime bags of weed for 20 years was kind of od yeah a little so, bit yeah so there are some things that are laws necessary. are adjustable yeah they're definitely adjustable like i'd be driving on my seatbelt sometimes yeah yeah, like, I think, yeah, like, that shouldn't be a law. Like, if you want to put your own life in danger, fine. Yeah. Um, But, like, if I don't have my seatbelt on and you catch me. That, that's I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. But, like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, like, like the other opposite is, like, I've already flown through the windshield. So, like, what is, what is <laughs> like, your, your, your advertisement. You don't need to tell me to put on my seatbelt. It's in the car. I know it's there, but I'm still not going to put it on. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So. so, I think, yeah, that's my little two cents on that. But yeah. I think... You know, from what I know about history, and I'm a, I'm a kind of a big history buff. Mm -hmm. I don't know as much as the next guy, but I know more than the average average bear. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things we're living in right now are stemming from the whole Anglican Gregorian Church rhetoric of, you know, the Pope and shit like that. I might say this and get I don't know crucified, but you know, it's just a lot of um the the things we're following don't even really uh work outside of this sphere that we're living in so mm -hmm. i think just half of this stuff is kind of stupid anyway yeah that's why we got to go abroad and see how it is other places and you since we're outside of our immediate environment we could see like yo okay america was kind of bugging with that or you know what i've seen more lawlessness and i'm like nah we, we kind of had it it's it's a maybe a little bit over restrictive but at least we don't have x y and z thing going on yeah and it becomes a lot i don't know i feel like i, I like it better when you're in a civilization or, or a state where it's lawless and people still respect human decency yeah because then it shows you that the people there are actually people as opposed to just doing things not just to get caught or doing things to get away with it you know yeah um controversial money man of mystery andrew tate actually said that you know he said in romania like you know, I can bribe people and stuff compared to America. You have to be a certain people, certain person to be able to bribe people. So he's like, I like the evenness of it where like the average everyday person can get to that level and get things done their way instead of you have to be in this secret club. But at the same time, he also said, there's not really crime here because everyone is Romanian. So they're like, why would I hurt my, my, my countrymen, my right. brother and my sister and stuff like that. So I think you're not going to get that here in the States. It's too diverse and too many conflicting groups. And, you know, oh, you did this to us 400 years ago. You did this to us 30 years ago. You destabilized my country, you know, um, you know, other stuff like that. So there's, it's really no, uh, nothing to like rally behind. Yeah. But, um, and, and it's funny you mentioned that too, because we talked about this in the studio the, uh, the other night where it's like, well, not, the, not exactly this, but a lot of this, this rhetoric goes around where, black on black crime and white on white crime and in romania if they're all romanian do not you don't talk about romanian or romanian crime yeah so I want, that's yeah it's, it's, it's proximity crime like you're gonna why are you gonna go across town to rob somebody like that's just more work and gas and you, you're gonna stick out like a sore thumb right, right you know so um next thing getting to more more modern things 
with uh, financial freedom and the, and the ways to achieve it increasingly becoming online, investing, trading, AI, everything being online, it's forcing people to be behind their screens more and less in person. Um, so how do you feel about that? That the way out is through the metaverse or through, you know, whatever Wally dystopian future we're headed towards potentially. Firstly, I think it's stunting the growth of IRL interaction. Mm -hmm. So people are lacking ability to communicate, not people in my circle or people I come in contact with on my day to day, but definitely the kids. Yeah. I was going to say to interject really quick, we're the last generation that lived in the analog world Mm -hmm. where it was, you know, just come on when the lights come on and stuff like that. Anyone younger than us, and we're not that old, they've grown up with technology embedded in their lives from the jump. So I think us, we're the last bastion of like, all right, yo, you guys are kind of like socially awkward or whatever. But after that, yeah, it's, it's up. Like, good luck to them. Yeah, like talking, to my, my, my other uncle was talking about how um, his son or something or his son's friend was having trouble talking to girls they just shoot their shot over Instagram and then they get rejected or ghosted or ignored. Yeah, get, a, get a number like a man. Yeah. Or just, get rejected and blocked like a man. <laughs> <laughs> or just like, just converse in public or do your little seduction game or whatever. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's different from yeah, our generation. Where yeah, you, times have changed. You really had to like, you like, bro, I like her. Then talk to her, nigga. Like, yeah, that's how it went back then. You know, now it's just, yeah. Can I get your Instagram? You can like form it. You can do like snooping and see like what she's into. Create a pickup line based off her interests. Like, you could really be some 007 agent type of person. Where in person, you got to be quick on your feet. You got to do everything in the moment, and that's what really teaches you. Not this reconnaissance oracle. You know, the Joker's on. 41st Street, get me, you know, so. Um, <laughs> but back to the whole, uh, you mentioned something about the financial side of. Mm-hmm. Uh, Making being, money is yeah. like increasingly online now. I think as it becomes increasingly online, I look towards people who have done uh, well for themselves in the space from our generation, you know, like, especially people in the culture, like, like, um, I don't know, I'm just going to name drop here, like the, like Ian Connor in his camp, like Bloody Dior. Um, you have people who just started with the internet wave and then just being themselves on the internet ga- uh, garnered, ten- garnered attention yeah. and, and, and managed to build themselves through what the internet could gravi- uh, uh, bring them. I'm stumbling over my words right now. You know, the, the money Kai Sinat and AMP and, and those guys make is, like, kudos to them. I'm not hating at all, but it's incredible. You're just, you're just filming your day-to-day and you're making, I think Kai said 400K a month just from Twitch. That doesn't count endorsements or whatever else he does. And he'd be coming home to his, to his parents' house in the Bronx, you know, normal, whatever, and then he'll go back to Atlanta and 400K a month. Give me one month of that. That's all I need. I don't need some crazy lump sum and I can make the money shake or whatever, but he's getting that consistently for now. And I mean, he's also, he's also in entertainment though. So he's subject to that in today out tomorrow persona, but the kids really like him and like, met like, like, uh, you know, like his message and everything and his content. So I don't, I think he's going to be around for a while, but he definitely needs, I think to find something to pivot to when that starts dying down. But Twitch is kind of just beginning. I could see well into his mid thirties, him still being relevant and, you know, yeah. being the greatest Twitch streamer of all time. And that's having, all he needs really, to be honest. Cause with that kind of money at that point, maturity kicks in and, and, and um, yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll definitely... probably transition his topics maybe to more adult stuff, but and there are definitely people in his ear telling him how to use the money correctly. So yeah, yeah but shout out AMP for sure. Shout, shout out, out Kai. This niggas is mad funny, bro. Yeah. New York is, New York is uh ice spice too yeah new york is back on the map not not in the rap game unfortunately no offense to you ice but um <laughs> not yet you're 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 almost there but um you know just in other endeavors there's a, a lot of people that we don't necessarily know personally but kai's what like four years younger than us so he would have been a freshman when we were seniors like some like that. yeah he's he's you know he, he went to some place in the bronx like these are all people that if we knew one person, we'd know these people personally, sort of mm-hmm. thing. So, um, I think it's incredible. Shout out JoJo Gray too. He's going coming back. Uh, I think this weekend to 
to some dinner or something um, as an alma mater, Neuro High um, Nationals um, All Star pitcher. I played with him when we were in Little League. Um, great kid, comes from a great family, great dude. So um, definitely gotta gotta have him on on the podcast soon. Um, but yeah, man, shout out shout out to our network just because we know so many like wonderful people and and people who are doing like a lot of a lot of good things. Mashallah, yeah, big shout out to them. So I think pivoting. I was gonna. I was gonna ask you your thought process, but I think we we touched upon the whole idea of just, um, just using your network, and then I, I don't know. It's kind of tough because I haven't really done it myself. No, I think about it. Online money. Online money. Yeah, you have. I mean, streaming is kind of like that. Like it's not. It's not direct uh, to consumer. Like you're doing it from an automated process in a way. So it's kind of like online. Money. Yeah, I mean, like, but I'm, I'm not making four hundred k a month on my music yet. You know what I'm saying? But a dollar is a dollar. A dollar is a dollar. Yeah, a dollar is a dollar. I would say, I don't know. I think maybe it's, it definitely shows who's lazy. Because mm-hmm. before, like, if you didn't want to go to work, okay, that's fine. But now the, your excuse is you don't want to sign in to Twitch. Yeah. You don't want to upload a song. And there's to information kid. everywhere. It's not like, oh, I had to go to some, to some library or I had to know this person exactly. who was in this thing. Like, everything is out there. You can get now. a job online. You can upload anything to youtube it's just it's just a grind though that's the that, that's i think that's yeah, the thing it's people very are, arcadey are, but i mean if you yeah. can grind your 2k player you can grind getting a comfortable 10k you if you make a little as measly as 10k a month you can live anywhere in the world anywhere anywhere that's in the world. mission so i think pivoting from that let's see here um modern stigmas uh where do you think in that same hold on let me start the camera again yeah Modern stigmas. Where do you think we get our group think from? I mean, aside from just the internet, maybe different different platforms on the internet. And how accurate do you think our skew of the world is being young black males in a world where black people kind of run the culture, but there are still people kind of removed from it? Mm-hmm. Um, well, there's, I guess if you want to get deep enough, like there's like the, you know, Jungian psychology thing of there's, uh, there's an innate group consciousness that we have as human beings. You know, the, the Galapagos Island monkey theory, you know, you teach one monkey how to use a wrench and then all of them learn how to do it. Michael Jordan jumped from the free throw line and dunked. Now everyone in the NBA can do that. So we have that innate group think that we have as human beings. But then there's, it's, I think it just, depending on where you are, it, it dumbs it down. So it's by nation, it's by neighborhood, it's by ethnic background, it's by language, it's by whatever. So you have these all smaller little group things. Um, but I think here in the United States, it's a it's a propaganda party for everything, man. Buy Coke, buy Pepsi, go to Maldives, go to Japan, you know, do this, do that, you know, always competing sides, always opposition, this side's wrong, this side's right, do this, do that. You know, we're bombarded at birth with just it's a big commercial over here, basically. Um, whereas other places that are less technologically involved, um, you know, there's just less of it. So it's a more natural, you know, conversations, more natural interactions and, um, you know, less is more, you know, happy with the little joys instead of, oh, I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have whatever. So I would say, yeah, it's, um, here is definitely more culture. Um, which is funny because we're in an individualistic society over here, but I'd say, yeah, culturally it's, it's uh, extrapolated because of our our big machine of like propaganda and stuff like that. Um, whereas Division. other places, it's you're you're more involved in your community, so it's more community based. But you understand your role, and so that's your individuality. But you're also not selfish, and you're like, I don't. It doesn't matter what I want. I still need to do my job to support everyone else. Right. And then you know that giant moving organism rubs your back. And then you rub the back of the giant moving organism as well. So it's a, it's a, a perfect give and take. Copy. As we run out of topics, I think we have the technological advancement talking point and then the uh, common productivity habits talking point. I think we could wrap up with the, uh, the productivity habits, but I'm going to ask this question first since we're on the topic of civilization and technology. Um, how profound do you think the impact of technology has been? on your life specifically and the people around you and what is the biggest uh resource technologically that that you use in your day-to-day life so definitely my phone i'm phone phone or nothing sort of person um 
I don't like being on my laptop. I hate having to open my laptop and do stuff. It's just much easier for my phone. It's more mobile. I can like lay down or I could be doing jumping jacks or whatever. Um, but technology is like thinking back is very profound. I mean, I watched a bunch of TV as a kid. Um, I had Game Boy Advance, DS, PSP, shout out Sony, shout out Nintendo. Um, so technology has always been around, but more so in an entertainment sense. Um, you know, instead of the nighttime stories by the campfire or reading a book, I, you know, I'd watch TV or a movie or, um, you know, play a game or something like that. But other than that, I mean, there's a lot of things we take for granted. I mean, cars and buses and trains and planes and all that stuff. That's technology that we've had just as commonplace growing up that we take for granted. So technology on an unconscious level has done a lot. Um, but, you know, I'm not a spoiled city kid. I, uh, not even spoiled city kid. Maybe a spoiled Californian because they have to drive everywhere. But I'm perfectly fine walking two, three, four, five, six miles a day to get to where I need to go, taking public transportation, um, stuff like that. So it's had a profound effect. But I think if, like, where we're at right now, I'm perfectly fine with if, if people were, like, on their phones less and more in-person interaction. Like, my life isn't going to turn upside down where I'm like, oh, no, what am I going to do? Like, or I don't know, you know, Netflix goes away. I can find something to do because I have enough outside technological things that I do and enjoy. No video games would kind of suck, I guess. But like, you know, you can make your own video games in a way, tic-tac-toe or whatever. So um, I say all that to say technology has been great, but, you know, I'm, I'm okay with where it's at right now. I don't need anything else beyond that. All right, and then rank the common productivity no, no, no. habits. What? How would you say technology? I was trying to dodge that question. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, <laughs> I would say, oh, I'm just grateful for audio. You know, it, audio provides us a way to uh, spread our own propaganda mm. in a way that's beneficial. Microphones, headphones, interfaces, computers. Um, I think the computer has been my biggest resource my biggest or my favorite uh technological advancement um shit since i was in when did i start watching one piece the first thing i did i can recall on my computer i can recall it might have been the first thing i did i think the first thing i did was make an email address but the second thing i did was watch one piece when i was in like third grade or some shit was it was your first email address uh big coast 97 at hotmail.com i actually remember that email. <laughs> big actually coast remember 97 that. at hotmail.com yeah, yeah man um but yeah i was the, the computer is just such a great thing man and although back in those days the resources and how to do things wasn't as accessible as it is now it was still great because you can just surf the internet and just find whatever i was watching just mad anime um I was just finding pictures online and tracing them from my computer screen. Um, yeah, and the social media came around, and then that was kind of... Social media came and went. Like, prime Twitter of, like, 2014, like, maybe 2019. It was good, but now I don't even use it. I just go on the, the CC one and post our clips and videos. But I'll see, you know, something interesting or something funny every now and then. But I'm, I'm okay with, like, not really using it. Yeah, back then it was, it was meme culture. Like, mm-hmm. I was on Twitter just posting memes. And that shit got me some, some laughs in high school. Yeah. I think, I think we're going back to niche parts of the internet. So, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like Reddit where it's like, okay, I'm just talking about baseball. Or I'm just talking about this or that instead of having all these groups. Because, I mean, it's just giant high school. Social media is just giant high school. So, yeah, definitely. you have the, the people who are, think they're you know, oh, their tweets are funny and, you know, they're, they have that social popularity. They could be dead wrong. They could say two plus two equals five, but because they have that clout, people are just like, whatever, you know? So, um, I think, I think we're getting back to maybe a little bit more of a meritocracy yeah. um, in, in regards to that over the internet, but who knows with AI, you know? So Yeah. And AI definitely, it has access to basically the way I think of it, AI is just a giant brain amalgamating all the thoughts of the human psyche. And that sounds dangerous in itself because people are just so lax with what they put on the internet. So Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the bozos though for the funny content. But uh, shout out them. But shout out not shout out to the other people who are given given ammo to be exploited. But I mean, hopefully not in our lifetime. You know, we have to worry about, you know, 
Total Recall or um, I don't know, Skynet, you know, right. stuff like that. So um, I'll ask the last question. You were stealing all my questions. Like I stole one question, my G. Nah, you, this, <laughs> this question you just asked was literally my question. Which, um, oh, the, the the, all the all the all the ones all the ones at the top are yours. Um, so we know about the 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 grifty productivity hacks and everything like that that you hear about. You know, take a cold shower, wake up at four a.m., go to bed at ten. You know, only eat home cooked food, no seed oils, no alcohol, no marijuana, anything that affects your brain. What uh, what should you say is your favorite of these productivity habits that you do, if any at all? Uh, cold showers. Mm -hmm. mainly because I was taking cold showers when I was a kid. And then when I was moving out of my house, the landlord turned the hot water off. Mm -hmm. So I, I was forced to take cold showers. Um, but I, it's good for your skin. Definitely feels recharged or you feel recharged after you hop out the shower. And that, that whole feeling of when you take a hot shower and you come out the shower and you're cold, take a cold shower, hop out, you feel like you're- Yeah, like ready, a million bucks. Like a million bucks, so- I like cold showers a lot. I like cold showers a lot. 4 a.m. wake up. Sometimes I wake up at 4 a.m. just randomly. And I'm just like, damn. I, I, I type my day. I end up going back to sleep in like a couple hours. But mm -hmm. you definitely get more of the day. Mm -hmm. But that, I can, you can miss me with that one. 10 p.m. bedtime. Can't work. I work past 10 o'clock. Um, but uh, yeah, cold showers. Definitely top one. Yeah, I would, uh, I would agree. The cold showers help a lot. Um, if you're an overthinker, like a lot in your head, that, that'll shock that away. You're like, you know, you're shivering, you're shaking, you're, you know, jinkies. Um, so cold showers are good. Stabilize the mood. Um, yeah, you feel refreshed and everything. Um, not 4 a.m. wake up. I mean, I wake up at like six, so close enough. And then I'd say 10 p.m. If I, if I had a, if I was a person who could go to bed early, I would say 10 p.m. Cause the times I have fallen asleep and woken up with the sun and and had the circadian rhythm moving with the natural cycles of like the day oh man you're, it's great like you know you get a bunch of stuff done you're up before everyone you know um and you don't get that i guess i call it purgatory time that time between like 10 p.m and 2 a.m where you're like you're just finding stuff to do because you're like you're not tired enough to go to sleep but you're not interest really interested in anything you're like switching between like social media cowboy bebop you know, texting a friend and whatever. So it's, you know, but nothing's really going on. So you kind of avoid that too. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really it. I mean, I try and cook from home as much as it is anyway, eat healthy, all that other stuff, exercise. So um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I got on my end, I think. All right. I think this is a shorter one. Any shout outs? Um, shout out to dad. Just got off the phone with him before we recorded this. Shout out mom. Um, I haven't got off the phone with her. I'll probably call her after this and that'll be another four hours of my time. <laughs> um, Respect to the mother. Yeah. Um, shout out to the family. Shout out to healthy family members. Shout out to good friends. Um, shout out to peace, happiness, and love. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got. Um, it's a, oh, shout out to heat and warmth and the, sun. Warmth and the it sun. It is freezing here in New York. And I mean, it's not that bad. It's not like zero, but like it's like 20 degrees or something like that it's one of the colder winters last winter didn't get below like 40 degrees so this is uh it's pretty brick you know to say the least but um yeah that's all i got excuse me uh shout out to my girl she's over there on her phone chilling shout out parents shout out stainless global uh stilion cool kid dre or dre jarell now greg self Clap. Tough last name. Yeah, self is a hard ass last name. Uh, Money Rich, Tor, uh, just everyone who's part of the camp. Um, Stick Bow. Um, hmm, any other shout outs? Shout out Gainful Employment. Shout out The Sun. Shout out God. Um, shout out Technology. And shout out Clothes that keep us warm during these winter, war uh, winter, winter cycles. Facts. Uh, so I think that's. Uh that's everything. We'll see you guys next week and um, let us know any guests you want to have on or anything. We're going to maybe start implementing or, you know, bringing some more people on or anything. So shout out anyone that you'd like to have on. But until then, stay safe, stay warm, and we'll catch you next week. Peace.